Thank you. Thank you so much, Ralph. It's, it's great to be with you. I love you back, believe me, thank you. All right. Who are we? We are one nation under God. And that's where I start today. We are a people of faith and freedom. And that's where I start today. We are a nation founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And that's who we are. And that's who I and everyone in this audience intends to make sure America continues to be. Now, I have been a prosecutor, a judge, and a district attorney. And in the 32 years that I was in the criminal justice system, I have seen America change from a system that cared about victims to where we are today that is about the criminal, that is about making sure that the criminal is the one who has all the rights. In fact, the very name of the system is the criminal justice system. It should be the victim's justice system, the victim who never chose to be a part of the system. But today, what we see in America is a narrative that is tearing truth and justice apart. Truth and justice is the essence of who we are. We are a nation under God. We are a nation where we put our hands on the Bible and we swear to tell the truth. We are a nation that believes and separates right from wrong. We are a nation that has a moral compass. But all of a sudden, everything is upside down. Right is wrong and wrong is right and up is down and down is inside out. <laughs> we are now being told that the police are serial, rapist, racist murderers. I'm here to tell you that the police are the most service-oriented non-interested people in our system today. Who do you know that knowingly puts on his or her uniform and leaves their family knowing that they may not come home, knowing that they may die for someone that they've never even met, knowing that they may be going out to do good and end up dying at the hands of an evil person? Who of you goes out there and says, you know what, I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to have them accuse me of being uh, all kinds of things and having my family terrorized and my life basically ended. These people are heroes. They are the ones who run to problems. They are our heroes. And they are the one line of defense between a civilized society and barbarism. And the more the left tries to defund them, denigrate them, demoralize them, and force them to stand down, the more our society breaks down. And so I am here to tell you, yeah, we're disappointed. It didn't work out the way we thought. And the world is in a mess. We had a war in the Middle East. We've got a crisis at the southern border. Inflation is the highest it's been in 13 years. We have a president who met with Putin in Geneva, and our guy looked ridiculous, and their guy looks strong. 
But I'm here to tell you that this is the time for the majority. And make no mistake, we are the silent majority. It is time to take America back. I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about how it is wrong to enforce the law, how it is racist for you to live in a neighborhood that my family lived in 30 years ago. What we saw in America last summer was anarchy. It was chaos. It was a move toward Marxism and socialism. And America will never be a socialist country. We will never allow it to be a socialist country. But make no mistake, make no mistake, they are plowing the field every day, every day. And it happens from the top. Why is it that restaurants can't get people to work? Why? Why can't small businesses get people to come back to work? Even beauty salons? Because the government is giving people money so that they stay home and don't work. It's reliance on the government. It is, it's a training ground for socialism. That's what they're doing to us. More people are quitting, they're not working. They figure they'll take, they'll take the money. And then we've got the crisis at the border. Just to make it harder, if you want to get a job, in three months we had a half a million people come through the border that we know of. It doesn't count the getaways. Now, you know what? The half a million people that the states say, like Tennessee, we don't want them, then they fly them in or bust them in in the quiet of the night, okay? And then what happens is if they get to New York, if you're an illegal during a pandemic, we'll give you $12,500. Now, who do you think is paying for that? You and me. That is not the America that our founding fathers envisioned. We don't reward people for breaking our laws for come here and for not working. That's not how it works. You know, when I was a judge, one of the things that would aggravate me, and if you watch my show, Justice, you know it aggravates me. I hate it when people lie to me. Don't lie to me. I, I even wrote a book called Don't Lie to Me, and we're selling it after I speak here. But if I was sitting on the bench and this defendant is standing in front of me, I remember my blood would boil if you lied to me or a witness in the witness well lying to me. You know, they swear on the Bible and they still lie to you. The problem today is that the government lies to you. Now that's a blasphemous statement to some, but let's talk about some of the lies because you know that every lie will be revealed. <laughs> yeah. So, President Trump's building the wall in his border security, that's not doing anything to protect us. Well, now that they're not being building a wall, we know that was a lie. They said that it wasn't Hunter Biden's laptop. Now we know that was a lie. And then they said that there was Russia collusion. Even they said that was a lie. And then they said that the Russians were putting a bounty on American soldiers. 
Now we know that was a lie. And it goes on and on of the lies that were started on the left and then promoted through the mainstream media. And then a president ended up losing an election. This isn't how it works. You don't tarnish someone and say, he did X, Y, and Z, and not have a consequence for it. Journalism is not what it used to be. If they say something that's not true, they just say, okay, well, that's the end of that. But I think it was the President Trump who said, the virus came from a lab. They said that was a lie. Well, it seems now that that was true. And they said that the president had Lafayette Square tear gassed so he could do a photo op with a Bible near a church. Now we know that was a lie. What this all means is that we've got to have a moral compass that allows us to make decisions based on the facts, not on what they sell us. And sometimes it may not be a popular position to take. But faith and justice and truth are nonpartisan. They are non-political. It has nothing to do with party. But I'm here to tell you, they're coming for us. They're coming for our religion. They're coming for our free speech. They're coming for our guns. And they're coming for our ammunition. And if you watched Kamala Harris last week in Guatemala, being taken down by the president of Guatemala who says to her, maybe if you enforced your laws in the United States against these coyotes, you wouldn't have a problem. I mean, we really needed to send a vice president there to get, uh, to get lectured by the Guatemalan president? And Kamala, you can't answer one question. When are you going to the border? Well, no, I, I'm coming to here to Guatemala to find out why the, what the root cause is. Do you care what the root cause is? I don't care what the root cause is. All I care about when I prosecute a crime is, did they do it or didn't they do it? Did they violate the law and come here, yes or no? Are they entitled to be here, yes or no? And who of you is a criminal? Who of you is a sexual predator? Who of you is a pedophile? Who of you likes to drink and drive? Who of you is a member of MS-13? Who of you is from 160 countries, some of which are not allowed in this country? And I'm not saying that they're all a problem. That's absolutely not true. But if you got half a million in three months, I'm telling you there are a few people in there who don't belong here. And once we take out the criminals, Once we take out the criminals, then you know what? Get in the back of the line behind everybody else who decided to get a visa and decided to get a lawyer and ask America if they can come. <laughs> then you can get in line. But until then, you don't come here. We didn't ask you to come here. Give me this hogwash about Oh, I want asylum, I'm from a poor nation. That is not a basis of asylum. And let me tell you something. We are the most generous, the most charitable country in the world. Amen to that one. Now, I just want to say one more thing. I don't like totalitarianism. And I don't like governors who decide 
that I can't work or that I can't go outside or that I can't go to church. Don't you ever tell me that I can't go to church and practice my religion. There's a reason it is the First Amendment. Freedom of religion is number one. Number one. That is why we are here in America. We are one nation under God. God. And God has this. God has this. And I'm telling you, we have a problem. When the United States Supreme Court says, you want to open the casinos in Las Vegas? Have at it. You want to open the movie theaters, the, the multiplexes in Las Vegas? Have at it. You want to open that little chapel over there? Not so fast, maybe, maybe 20, 30, 40. That is wrong. So as we move forward on the road to the majority, it is up to you, up to us, the silent majority, to make sure that America continues to thrive under the freedoms that our founding fathers intended it to thrive under so that they would actually recognize America as a place that they created. So going forward, you have a job to do. I have a job to do. And that is to recognize that we have the power that we have the ability and we have the motivation. You have seen what it's like on the other side and they're just getting started. So take a message from this. Take a message and go forward and with God's help we will keep America the nation that God has blessed since his creation. God bless you, thank you. This is, this is uh, kind of fun because uh, normally you're the one who asks the question. Yeah, always. Now I'm interviewing <laughs> you. Um, you know, I was so struck by your remarks and you know how much we love and admire you okay. here. And I, you know, when you said God has this, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a challenging time for us to watch what is unfolding mm -hmm. in Washington. But you seem to have great hope, and your hope, if I heard you right, derives from your faith. It does. And so could you talk a little bit more about that? What, what is it uh, that you sense that gives you such hope and uh, causes you to believe that God has a, has a real plan through all this? You know, Ralph, I, um, for 30 years, I dealt with the most horrific situations you could imagine. I was a prosecutor, an assistant DA, dealing with children who had been raped, immersed in scalding water, tied to radiators. I mean, I could, I, I could tell you horrible, horrible stories. And I saw faith in some victims. One in particular was a little girl who was abducted uh, and she was taken to a motel and raped. She was about nine years old, and she had just gotten a watch that lit up at night. And after she was molested, they, they, he put her back in the trunk, and she looked, it was dark, and she looked at her watch, and she knew that it was 45 minutes from the time she got into the trunk. And he threw her within a block or two of her house, just threw her out on the grass. And I remember speaking to her mother, and her mother said, God brought her back to me, Janine. And at that time, I, I started losing my faith because I said, how could God let this happen to these children? And I realized that she was right. And my mom grew up in the Holy Land. My mom, I'm a Lebanese Christian, 
So my mom grew up in the Holy Land, and I, I get it from her. She spoke in Aramaic, was, which was the language of Jesus. And uh, when she passed, I had bish when she was in hospice, I had bishops come in who blessed her in that language. So God has always been a part of my life. Um, every day I speak to him. And I know when I was on that bench, it said, in God we trust. You take out a dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. You go to Congress, it says, in God we trust. You go to Washington, the Smithsonian, a million places in God. This nation is blessed by God. I believe that. Amen. I do, Ralph. Yeah. I do. Yeah, we do too. And it, and it gives us great hope, and it makes us understand that God can take what the enemy means for evil, what happened to that little girl, and he can turn it for yeah. good and for his glory. Yeah. And even having you share that story is extraordinary. You know, you, you went through the lies. You went through the distortions. The lies that were told about President Trump, and we don't need to go through them again. You, you did a great job of, of cataloging them all. But if the American people, Janine, don't know the truth, then how can they make informed voting decisions? And as somebody who's in the media, mm -hmm. what do you think is the answer what can be done, or is there an answer? You know, I, it's a great question, Ralph. I'm not sure that a lot of people want the truth. I think that some people are so dug in ideologically that the truth doesn't matter, that it's their side, period. I truly believe that now. And I think that it's up to us to say, we have to get all of our forces together that means young and old and everyone to say this, this country's on a path towards socialism. I mean, AOC wants to tell you if you can have a hamburger. Don't get me started on that one. Um, and, you know, it's up to us. It's up to us. We're not going to change their minds. They're dug in. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Facebook just announced that uh, they're going to revisit the deplatforming of President Trump in two years. And this didn't begin with President Trump. You remember when uh, Mike Huckabee set up the uh, Chick-fil-A Day page? Oh, yeah. They, they deplatformed that. You're right. Um, as, as somebody who is an attorney and a legal mind, uh, what should we be thinking about as an organization to rein in these big tech and social media giants? Well, I think right now, I think we have an opportunity because it appears that both uh, Democrat and Republican uh, Congress people are interested in, in regulating these platforms and taking away the 230 protections under the uh, Communication Decency Act. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just have to stay on them. Uh, and then there has to be other ways of gathering information. It's that simple. Ralph, it really is. It's outrageous. There has to be other ways of getting information. It's an outrage what happened. It's an outrage what happened with the Hunter Biden story. You know, and now he's a hero. I mean, is he teaching in a college or something? I, I haven't kept up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know, and, and you just reminded me that in the closing weeks of the last campaign, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter deplatformed the New York Post, the third largest newspaper in, in America in by circulation. Yes, without a doubt. So I, I, I can just assure you that our organization is mm -hmm. going to be supportive of making sure that these big tech and social media giants are reined in and that they respect our rights. Yeah, that's something. And if they don't, then we're going to sue them. Oh, really? Yes. We're going to take away those protections, as you said, under Section 230. Right. Um, how, uh, how optimistic are you about uh, the ability of any bipartisan deals to get done in Washington under this president? Whether it's infrastructure, police reform, um, do you think Joe Manchin announcing that he's not going to weaken the filibuster, he says he's not going to vote for H.R. 1, is that going to force compromise, or yeah. do they bypass it? No, I think that Joe Manchin has been, uh, y you know, a very strong force in America, and uh, I give him tremendous credit, thank God for him. Uh, he's a man who's got a moral core and moral compass. 
Uh, I doubt that Joe Biden is interested in, um, you know, in getting both sides to do anything. Um, they're even talking about, uh, uh, what is it, uh, which resolution is it, uh, uh, going forward without agreement. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Yeah, but I'm not optimistic about that. The only thing I'm optimistic about is 2022. I think America has seen where we're headed, and I think that's the only leverage that we have. Yeah, uh, last question, and by the way, I wanna, I wanna make sure everybody knows, Janine is gonna be signing her book, Don't Lie to Me, uh, outside in the Osceola lobby or immediately afterwards. Uh, this is a great book, get your copy. Uh, we're gonna be watching you Saturday night. Yep. Uh, but before we let you go, um, what do you think uh, of all the things that are coming down the track in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, you know, H.R. 1, S. 1, um, you know, the, the packing of the Supreme Court, the, the Green New Deal, the runaway spending. What of those things do you think poses the greatest threat to America? Runaway spending. I think that, that impacts every one of us. You know it in the supermarket. You know it when, when you go to fill your car with or your truck with gas. I think that's the problem. I think the packing of the Supreme Court, they kind of backed off of that. I thought that was weird. They have this commission that's supposed to come out and say we need to pack it. For some reason, they backed off of that. H.R. 1, we've got Joe Manchin, and I think cinema. I don't think there's going to be any issue with that. Uh, but I really think inflation is going to be something we're going to have to worry about. And you saw they're trying to shame uh, Justice Stephen Breyer into, into, into retiring. <laughs> You know, I have nothing to say about that other than, you know, I just hope he, I hope he, you know, hope he sticks, stays on as long as he can, you know. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> Judge Janine Perot, everybody. Get her book. God bless you, Janine. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah.